Hello and welcome to my studio. So we're continuing with Around the Home and Garden as the October prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and I'll leave the link to the group in the description box below. So from Around the Home I want to use this fabulous image that's on the front of the Telegraph magazine and it was only from a week or so ago. I would put it to the recycling for some reason and then pulled it back out again. I just think it's an amazing image so I'm going to use that. I also have some here, some leaf stamps that I made oh a while back. I'll leave the link to the video in which I made them. I've used them a lot. This is a piece of an old bath mat or shower mat. So again, something from around the home, albeit from a while back. I've got the gel plate papers that I pulled last week. I might use some of them. Actually, I say I might. In the end, I don't use them. And I'm also going to use my large Fabriano journal. And the image on the front of the magazine was quite large and so I needed one of my bigger journals to accommodate it because I didn't really want to lose anything at all. Now I will put a lot of this video on at speed uh, because it did take me a little while to work through this. So that's what I'm going to do. A lot of it I'll just whiz through. So basically I'm going to cut out this magazine image. I did think about just tearing around it and trying to blend it in but there was something today that I just felt that I needed to cut it out in detail and wouldn't that make a fabulous uh, piece for the, the, the front cover there. So just looking at how it's going to sit on the page and I actually, I don't always do my pages in sequence so I'm just moving forward to I think it's to the middle of a signature which is going to lie nice and flat for me looking at whether I wanted it the other way, but I wanted to pick up a lot of the detail that was actually within the image itself. So I'll move on from there. So just showing you here, the journal measures roughly just over nine inches by 12, which is something like 23 centimetres by about 30. And I've just some, put some paper between my pages just to stop the paint going over. I'm trying to use up all these craft paint bottles because some of them are getting a bit gloopy but here I'm using a red, a yellow and I also use a white and you'll see that I take the brayer to roll the paint out just to create a nice kind of uneven background, a little bit textured and just spreading the paints uh, just with the roller. So just looking here at where I want to place her, but I can see that, although it's difficult to see in the image, I could see where her feet were. And I felt that I wanted to bring out more of that kind of detail. So I'm now going to take that old piece of bath mat, just going to use the gel plate, and I'm going to put a, almost just a kind of path down because I want to ground her within the page. So putting her onto a path. I'm using this Payne's Grey. Now initially I was going to stamp with the shower mat but in the end I do a bit of using the gel plate as a kind of stamp and then just using the actual shower mat as well just to get a bit more detail here and there.
So this little flyer that I've got in my hand just came in this morning and I really liked that image on the front and I thought about whether or not I might use that and I come back and look at it a couple of times. A lot of people ask me what gel matte medium I use. It's normally the Liquitex. I couldn't get that last time so I'm using Windsor and Newton. Uh, I'm a big fan of Windsor Newton products, but it's actually the first time that I've used their gel matte medium and I have to say I, I liked it very much. It's slightly different to the Liquitex, but I would say it did just as good a job. But that's just based on this one outing for it. So I've put some gel matte medium down on my page and I'm now putting some onto the back of the image because I want to make sure that I've got a really good bond between the two. Not skimping on it in any way, I want it firmly fixed. Once it's down I will try and smooth the image out just using a piece of paper towel and then I'll put a piece of scrap paper down on top and use a brayer to go over it. Now you need to be careful with the scrap paper because of course it could stick to the matte medium on the top. So I do that very quickly and then I dry the, the whole thing off. Now I do want to put something on top of the magazine image because some of the paints might not stick well to it because it was kind of glossy. I thought about using just a layer of gel matte medium. Uh, I was swithering between that and the clear gesso, but in the end I used a clear gesso and I put a good coat right over it, including over the very edges where it meets or where it joins onto the page. After it's dry, I decide I'm going to use some metallic colours to colour the figure in because this figure represents autumn. So I'm going to do most of her kind of cloak in a bronze, but I'm going to do the highlights with a gold. And after a little while, I decide that I'm also going to bring some metallic colour to her hair and I use an Arteza, I think it's a, a kind of raspberry pearl colour, but I will list the colours below. I do extend her cloak over a little bit. In some ways it was quite difficult to see the image, uh, just because it was so dark. So I am trying here and there to make sure that I represent it as much as possible, but also kind of make it my own. So as I say, I extend the cloak a bit. I don't follow the lines exactly.
So I think I want to bring a sun into this, you know, one of those glorious autumn suns that we see. So I decide to use some ink tents and I bring out a red, an orange and a yellow. Initially I was going to do it on the left hand page but then I feel that I want it kind of behind her and I just start to draw freehand using the ink tents and I use that I use then simply some water on a brush to colour in it colour it in. At this point I feel I need a tree, it's a very loosely drawn tree, just with an ordinary pencil there, I'll bring in some ink tents uh, just to make it a little bit bolder and then I'll just use my leaf stamps to stamp all over it. This is just stylized, it's not trying to make it like a real tree or real leaves, it's just to give that impression.
with that done, I start to use some more ink tens just to work on the arm that's in sight and the face. And I mainly work with the light and the shadows from the image that's there, just to try and get the features. Originally, I was going to try and put the features in in much more detail, but again, there was something about the image that I felt I just liked it the way that it was. So I just tried to work with it, uh, as I say, in terms of just picking up where there was light and dark points and trying to just get the face to stand out that little bit more. I took another look at the image with the roses in the basket but felt that it didn't really fit. And at this point I was trying to think as to whether or not there was something else that I wanted to do with the page. I do just do a little bit more work with Ink Tense on the sun and the tree just a little bit, just some shadows on it and a little bit more on the background, just bringing in a little bit more colour, smoothing out some of that unevenness in the background. I like it, but by putting the ink tense on on top, it just smooths it out a little. In some ways, I feel that there's something else needed with this page, but at the moment, I don't know what that is, so I'm leaving it as is. But I'm just calling it Autumn Comes Calling. Now, of course, if you're in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, you're free to interpret the prompt in whatever way you want. And of course, Nina will have a video as well this week, and I will put a link to her video below. But this is just showing you how I have taken what's in the garden with the leaves, etc., as my kind of inspiration and I've also used a few items from within the home, the magazine, the old makeup sponge, the old piece of shower mat and used them in a kind of upcycling way. So I do hope you've enjoyed this and thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.